This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. I didn't listen to my own advice two weeks ago. I'm drinking Pellegrino again, and I feel like I'm on the verge of a belch. (laughs) But you know what? Who am I kidding? It says Pellegrino on the label, but it's vodka. It's 432 in the Uh afternoon right now, and you know, it's close enough to five o'clock. So it's vodka. I agree. That's the way to do it. I, I still for anybody who doesn't have a sense of humor, I'm joking. It's not vodka, but I still stick with what I've said before. I think like the best podcasts we could ever do is if you and I get hammered first and then record the podcast or better yet. I tried. I tried today. I had two beers at lunch before I got on with you, but it didn't work. That's not enough. Two martinis maybe, but two beers. No, I think we should invite like a super serious guest on. Somebody is like not known for having a sense of humor and you and I show up hammered and that will be the best <laughs> podcast we've ever done. I want video on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start today with a quote to be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you everybody else means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight. And never stop fighting. E.E. E. Cummings. So here's the truth. A finger quotes again. In reality, in finger quotes, as everybody in this world has been conditioned to believe, that stuff no longer interests me. Not in the least. Other than to, to just simply study it and marvel at how easy it is to, ma- to manipulate human beings into willingly selling themselves into slavery, basically becoming chattel, which is the basis of the word cattle. And it means you're owned, your property owned by others positioning themselves as masters over you so they can rape your minds and rob you of your life values. I like studying that stuff for that reason. But that reality that interests me no longer. The only thing that interests me now is is that which, unfortunately, I am now brave enough to admit I've stifled and suppressed most of my life just in order to live, <laughs> live in finger quotes, you know, just to just to, to to go along with the what I was told was reality and, and do what I was told was, you know, was my place in this world, you know, which was be this lower middle class guy born into poverty and live that reality. But I, you know, even during my business career, I've I've often stifled and suppressed that stuff, you know, but but I finally figured out what I've wanted all my life was not to, quote unquote, live if what others all around me are doing is called living, but simply to express myself, to express my truth, to to do my thing. Why? The, the answer is simple. To find me, the, the real me, the me with a capital M, the, the greater of me or wherever that greater thing is, the consciousness, the infinite awareness that's having an experience in this reality through my physical body, that the me without limits, that's why I've always wanted to express myself, to find that Dan. So And really, I think in spite of entrepreneurs saying that they're motivated by money and creating and growing a business, I think what they're really motivated by is the search for their self, the self with a capital S. Because as Einstein said, you cannot change or solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. So this entrepreneurial journey is, I think, is one of the best methods out there of discovering the you with a capital Y. That's why 
that's why Jonathan, that's why I talk about that stuff so much, because that's what interests me now. I get the wanting the money and to build a business and all this stuff, but that's why the sudden change and focus on this instead of, you know, the never ending pursuit of earthly and monetary rewards that we've been told are what defines success. So as part of that process, a recent realization totally shocked me. And this has forced me to reevaluate everything I've done up to this point in my life and, and frankly, everything I'll do in the future. And what is that you ask, Joe Nathan? Yeah, I do ask. Allow me to pontificate. Here's what we'll call the life countdown for the average male in the U.S. As soon as you're born, you got 78 years on this earth, statistically speaking. Your odds could be better or worse based on your genetics and other things. What you put in your mouth, uh, pure dumb luck, you'd be that good luck or bad luck. And, and uh, a big part of that also is your thought habits. So there's that. Of those 78 years, you spend one third of that time sleeping. So that leaves you 49 and 11 months of awake years. Although... <laughs> I would argue most people are not awake. 95% no actually sleepwalk like a zombie through those remaining 49 years and 11 months. Poor suckers. So count up all the hours spent doing time in the government-sponsored youth indoctrination camp. That's public school, by the way. So under the threat of incarceration, if you don't go, count up all that time right. you spent there. Or the threat of incarceration of you and your parents. Of course, we'll leave out the fact that your parents sold you into slavery the very minute you were born by signing a birth certificate with your name all in capital letters, which and 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 branding you with a social security number. If you'll read the fine print, they just signed you over as chattel it, property to the state. Go go look it up if you don't believe me. So so there's that. There's the the government uh, sponsored youth indoctrination camp. And if you choose to piss away six figures going to an institute of pile high and deeper government sponsored young adult indoctrination camp, that would be further education in the university. That leaves you with 46 years and four months of your life remaining. Woohoo! So now what do you do with that? You go get a J-O-B and put it in 91,000 hours there if you work an average work week. So there's 10 and a half more years of your life gone, leaving you with just 35 years and 11 months remaining. So now think of this, all the time you spend in traffic, going to and from work, running errands, that kind of stuff. There's another year of your life gone. Now you're down 34 years, eight months. Other stuff, brushing your teeth, taking a dump, bathing, getting ready to go to work. There's two and a half more years of your life gone. You're now down to 32 years and two months. Eating and drinking, that takes up four years. So now you got 28 years and two months left. Shopping, running the grocery store, buying stuff on Amazon, that all adds up to another two and a half years. Now you got 25 years and 10 months left. Let's add in cooking, cleaning, housework, mowing the lawn, doing various chores because most people don't pay others to do that $10 an hour work. There's another six years of your life gone. So now you're down to 20 years and one month. By the way, that's why I stopped doing those things years ago and pay someone else to use up their precious six years of their life doing that stuff for me. If Amen. you got kids or you care for loved ones or elderly parents or whatever, there goes another one and a half years. So now you're down to 18 years and five months. Actually, that seems way underestimated for caring for children, doesn't it? It's got to be way yeah. more than that. You, you should know that. I mean, you're a relatively new father. That, that sounds like a that's that's low. that that seems really low, but we'll <laughs> we'll stick with that. We'll stick with you down to eighteen years, five months. Okay, now let's add some more stuff in. Watching the idiot box, playing video games, wasting your life on Facebook, dealing with email. Pick your poison, whatever that is. You'll spend nine years wasting your life with that stuff. So now you're down to Yikes. nine years and six months of your life remaining. So so listen, listen to this. Out of those 78 years you've been given on this planet, we, we hope you, you make it to 78 or longer, but we're just going with statistics, 78 years. You know what this all means? Only nine of those years are yours. Only nine years to pursue a passion, to, to play, to laugh, 
to cry, to make memories with your friends and your and people you love. Nine years to to see the world, to watch sunsets on the beach, to hug your kids, to tell your spouse you love them, to love on your kids, to love on your pets. Nine short years. Here's what scared the hell out of me. I'm more than halfway through the process. So statistically speaking, I only have four years and a few months left to do the things I really want to do. The things that make me happy, the things that for me make life worth living, which by the way, that's why just as of recently, my copywriting fees have now gone through the roof. They've been raised so high, as a matter of fact, that I really don't believe anybody's going to pay them. And, and that's fine. That's the goal. But here's when this realization hit home for me that I only got four years left to do the things I really want to do. Yet some son of a bitch, I don't even know, halfway across the continent, wants to demonize me, publicly slander me on forums, or even my own damn blog back when I still allowed comments, simply because I didn't spend some of those precious few four good years of my life that I have left answering their freaking email. <laughs> And and do what I really want, you know, and, and do, I'm sorry, do what that person really wants me to do, which is work for him for free. The work I normally get paid for the, the, so I can go provide for my family and support, you know, a few other people who are unable to support themselves due to age or infirmities, you know, and use that income to go do the things I really want to do in those four remaining years I have left. Now, imagine just for a minute three to five emails like that per day. So if I choose to respond and perform to charity work via email, like but that what what that really is for all intents and purposes. So where does that time get stolen from? Does it get stolen from my work hours? My eating my meals time? My brushing my teeth and taking a dump time? No, it's stolen from the precious few four hour, four, excuse me, four years I have left for the stuff that makes life worth living, like the 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 joy I feel just learning a, a a Coltrane lick. There's a jazz reference, John Coltrane, sax player. Guitar players who want to play jazz always love stealing sax players licks because for some reason, sax players play the coolest stuff and guitar players get so stuck in the pentatonic box that just went over the heads of any non-musician, but any musician gets it, man. So... So learning a Coltrane lick is like bliss. The, 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 the indescribable sense of satisfaction that I get from, from turning a melody that I imagine in my head, you know, in a dream, turning that into a full-blown finished composition. I did, I did tell you that I've hired a Grammy-winning producer to work with me on my new CD, right? Or maybe I haven't. Wow. And he's nope, connected me news. to suit several of my heroes and... I don't want to say this too prematurely, but I believe it's going to come to pass three of them who it looks like they're going to agree to play on this project. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mike Stern, for one, who's been a guitar hero of mine for a long time. So I'm almost afraid to say the next guy, but Randy Brecker of the Brecker Brothers, a true living legend, looks like he's going to play trumpet on one. And Dave Weckl famous drummer who's played with everybody and is was and still is in Chick Corea's band. Looks like he's going to play on one of them. So that's where this time gets stolen from. The people, they, they just want, you know, just just a couple minutes of your time. You know, just a couple minutes, Dan. You know, like I'm in the oxygen tent dying. Like Gary Howard said, he said, I imagine myself in this oxygen tent. I'm minutes away from death. And somebody walks in, you know, pulls the tent back and says, Gary, can I just have a minute of your time? I just want to ask you about, would I get a better response if I put the stamp on my direct mail envelopes, you know, at, at an angle instead of straight? That's where my time gets stolen from by people who just want a minute of my time or want me to answer their emails, you know, that, that's stolen from hugging the Colombiana and telling her everything is going to be all right after she gets a particularly pr depressing medical diagnos di diagnosis or something or finds out a family member has a, a terminal disease. Or it's time stolen from laughing so hard with my sister and my niece and nephews, you know, until we're in tears. It's time stolen away from lying on the floor, hugging my Doberman, telling him he's been the best friend in the world just minutes before he passes away. That's where that time 
comes from. And those are the joys I get robbed of. Yet, it's me who's the arrogant prick for not answering emails and working for free for people I don't even know. So I thought the time invested in like the 200 plus free blog posts I post on DobermanDan.com was my way of giving back and helping strangers. But, but for some, it is never enough. They're just like the government. They say they're only going to take a little, but they just, that's just a lie. That's just a lie to open the door. Once you let them take a little, <laughs> they bleed you dry till you're freaking dead. I totally get it now. I understand why so many people I, I admire are downright misers with their time. Because once you face the reality of how little time you have left, I mean, really, time to really live, you'll guard it like gold and you will drastically readjust your priorities. And, and that's exactly what I've done and what I'm doing. I, I simply can't imagine myself on my deathbed thinking, gee, I really wish I would have spent more time answering all those emails from blood sucking strangers asking me to work for free. I just don't, I just don't <laughs> see it. that this, that it, all sure? kinds of, it, it just puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, four. you've only got four years left. I've only got a little bit more according to your calculations. Kind of scary. And, and when you think back, all right, so I graduated from high school in 1983. Now, for some people listening to this podcast, that might seem like an eternity, okay? 35 years ago, I can tell you something. It feels more like 15. And the older I get, the faster it goes. Four years is a fart in the wind. And, and just for fun, I, so I give my personal email to very few people anymore, but I just, I checked with Jackie, my assistant, and she assured me that the email she monitors, monitors for me, you know, all those time sucking emails, she's taken care of it. You know, I don't need to think a thing of it. She knows what to do with those emails. And instead, I'm just going to go hug the Colombiana and tell her, te amo. And then, then the three of us, me, her, and little cheeky Ricky, who's sleeping by my side right now, this little ball of fur shih tzu. 12 pounds, I think six of it is fur. We're just going to go outside on this beautiful, cloudy day and play. And you know what? I think you might want to do the same. Kind of makes you reevaluate how you spend your time, don't it? Yeah, that's, that's powerful stuff, Dan. All right, anything else as we wrap this one up? No, sir. Um, I'm out. I'm talked out. For more to say... I got nothing, honey. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good stuff, man. Thank you. And that is a wrap for another Off The Chain show. We'll be back in your earbuds next time. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Canine Crew got a special treat for you. What we are affectionately referring to as the Off The Chain Hotline. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Ask questions. We don't care. Just call 321 424 60 Four, three, and give us a piece of your mind. This is the podcastfactory.com.